Welcome back to the Can-Am Garage, guys. It's been a busy few weeks with the garage. I can't say as I've really finished anything, although I did sort of, but we'll get into that in a related video. Uh, in an unrelated video, you can see here my nice little 176 scale McDonnell Douglas Banshee, which was the on, only jet fighter ever flown by the Royal Canadian Navy. And this is in proper Royal Canadian Navy colors, decals, well, detail painting. <laughs> Only so many hours in a day. What we're here, what I'm, what I'm going to show you right now is, well, a few million things that I've acquired in the past month or so. Uh, late last month, there was a show in uh, Saint Saint Jean sur Richelieu, Quebec, which is oh, geez, 50, 55 minutes from here. Which, hey, I went, didn't stay very long, didn't really catch my interest that day. If you get what I mean, it was still cold, wet, gray, whatever else, but. I did make sure to go to my not-so-local hobby shop, and I grabbed up uh, four colors of the Tamiya Lacquer paints. This blue is beautiful. In fact, I've shown a still picture of it on my... Well, I'm assuming also on my... Uh, excuse me. I'm assuming I'd showed it on, uh, well, geez, I'm just drawing a complete blank. We're showing off the four colors that I did pick up. Silver, gun, metal, blue, and orange. I'm assuming I'd shown the picture of pure orange is what Tammy is calling it. Okay, haven't tried that. I have tried the blue. The blue is just amazing. I'm assuming I'd shown it on my Instagram. I know I showed it on, my, on, on the uh, Molotov Podcast Facebook group. There's also something that all came from Hobbeck in Granby, Quebec. This, <laughs> boy, I never thought I'd be buying any of this. This is Tamiya Enamel, and it's recommended for a future aircraft, airplane project. It's, uh, well, as I said, it's X9 Brown. I'll probably end up thinning, thinning it with lacquer thinner, which, well, means <laughs> it doesn't matter that it's enamel. But regardless, gut it. I did take off the cap. Just to, and give it a you know a couple of whiffs underneath my nose. It doesn't smell like testers, that's for sure. It in fact there's a little or no smell as I recall. Yeah. Also, well, at the hobby shop about three weeks ago now, I uh, picked up some of the Ravel Contact Cement. It has its uses alongside of the Tamiya Extra Thin, which hey, that's cool. Now we get into the more the uh, well the more varied stuff, shall we say? <laughs> We have here, available from ST Supply, a set of, what, 50 hooks, suitable for tow trucks, or, well, that's where mine will end up. They're very nicely photo etched. Very nice. I'm sure they'll be useful on something in the future. Courtesy of Len Geisler, a longtime friend, <laughs> is the mic is a long out of production Mike speed, Mike's Scale Speed Shop, new Challenger Shaker Hood and Scoop. Well, you know, it fits Ruffle and AMT. Yeah, I didn't notice that on the on the tag here. And the thing is, it does fit both the Ravel and AMT. It will need a little bit of cleanup. It should probably be, well, dunked in the... The... the, uh, the, 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 the geez. The, the Aqua Lagoon, as I call it. In other words, the... Uh, oh, God. I can't even think of the proper name of it right now. I'm just doing good. Anyway, this will be used for a replica of one of the three Dodge, modern Dodge Challenger I want to build. My friend Todd had a, I forget the year of it now, but it was a Shaker Edition, limited edition car, header orange, and now I have the hood and the Shaker to be able to do that with one of the Ravel kits, or at least my plan is to use a Ravel kit. Cool. Courtesy of Chris Martin on one of his trips because this stuff is virtually impossible to find around here the Ravel stuff because basically it comes in at the local shop which in my case is uh gcc the libre library gcc or the gcc bookstore toy store hobby shop art supply store everything like that clear flat Ravel. wanted it got it gonna try it next up off of ebay and we're gonna have visitor perhaps in the video here the cat is my cat has decided to join me on my lap and he's very interested in whatever's going on here and there's you see in the nose 
Yes, very nice of you. Thank you, Grom. Thank you. You can move on now. It's like, mm, I don't know. These were acquired off of eBay months ago. Just took a while to get them here from Chris, and there's no problem with that. The, 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 these are intended, believe it or not, for a 1970 Buick GSX. That was the cat slipping and thought I was going to get toenailed to pieces as he fell. These are intended for a 70 Buick GSX. That, that is a one of one car. It was in a featured car in a previous issue of Hemmings Muscle Machines. The car came finished from the factory. Yep. That's my knee, cat. Sorry about that. Uh, the car came finished from the factory in a Cadillac color, Fire Mist Gold. At least I think it was gold, Fire Mist Orange. Fire, it was a Fire Mist color. I have the color. I have the wheels. I have the kit. Mm, boy, that's going to look wonders. From Maple Airbrush Supply it is my Sharpen Air tool for re-straightening the tip of your airbrush. You start at one location, work your way to the other, one way to the other. I forget exactly what it is. And you finish up with their supplied polishing pad to smooth it out. Don't know what grit it is, but it isn't very sharp. It isn't very rough, I can tell you that much. Anyway, these are, this was featured, I saw this in, what, a couple, three issues back of Model Car Magazine and said, oh, I gotta have one. Do I need it? No. As far as I know, the tip of my air, of my Grex is fine, but I'm one of those guys who loves to be prepared just in case something happens. Because then you have to wait, you know, wait for availability. Do this, do that, and oh, I'll jump through, jump through all sorts of hoops. No, we're not doing that. Okay, moving on. Then we have some. I've told you before. I'm a big fan of one thirty second scale trucks. Both these decal sheets are original decal sheets. You can certainly tell that one is by the yellowing of the paper for the monogram one thirty two snap bison and the one thirty two snap. GMC General. I have multiples of the General. This, I'm sure, is going to come in handy one way or the other. I believe the Bison's being reissued, and if so, that's cool. Also included for fun, courtesy of Dan, oh, this is all courtesy of Dan Doan from Arizona, friend of mine. This is intended for AMT's 132nd scale Snap Together Max Superliner Holmes Wrecker. Yeah, I don't have that kit. I don't know if I'd use anything past the Max stripes and the chevrons for the back of the truck, well, the generic stuff like that, whatever else. What does it say in white? I can't. Oh, 24 hour service. Hmm. Might use something like that. I definitely use the Mac logos, but uh, there it's all a little. Hmm. Probably needs to be bleached by holding it up to putting it up to a window. That can be done. It's an old modeler trick. It definitely can be done. Anyway, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Len Geisler, for the resin hood. There's still lots more stuff to show you because recently ordered from Check Truck Modeler is their beautiful set for the AMT International Transtar Cab Over 4070A. It is truthfully beautiful. There's multiple pieces of instruction showing you everything you can want to know about it. Two sets of photo etch, including pre-colored. This you'll have to wrap have to wrap it around the sides of the truck, I believe. It's all right, not a problem. I'm up to that. You can just notice how much detail all the gauges are there. I mean, even here. Heck. Yeah, maybe even the international logo, which is beautiful. Uh, if I'm guessing exactly on how this thing is laid out, I'm going to guess that there red button would be uh, your brakes. But no, it's not because there's no separate button for the separate. Hmm. No way. I'll figure it out when I get to the kit. Regardless, the wood graining is done beautifully. I'm not taking it out of the bag today, guys. Just not going to. It is. If you have the kit, I don't say you need this. You need to get one of the one set for every version of the kit you have. In my case, no, I'm not doing that. But I do. I do have to have one set. Now, recently, there was a build off in one of the groups I follow on on uh, YouTube, and it was featuring, well, box, <laughs> box stock builds, except for the decals of the Tamiya Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3 car. 
I have done the Winds car, the Winds Ford GT, and I came across decals for the AMG car, and I said, oh, yeah, so I couldn't resist. I'm weak. I'm very weak. There's a set of pre-cut masks, which I'm assuming because instructions aren't metal emblems. Yeah, there's metal emblems in here for the, or maybe there was, or maybe, maybe there is, or whatever. We'll find out. It should still be in there. I know it was in there anyway. If it isn't, it won't have gone far. I'm going to guess that the pink is what the, because there's no real pink on the decal sheet. As you can see, there's sort of a pink, but not enough to do it all. Anyway, I'll have to look into sourcing the pink. Still, it'll certainly look better than a semi gloss gray AMG. No questions asked. Now, there's also been two car, two, two car kits that have come in in the past little while. And I suppose you'll you deserve to see them. One, well, this one, everybody's talking about this one. So I'm not going to do anything more than just say, yeah, there it is. I've got one. It's. I you know obviously I you know I built NASCAR before I built the monogram the yeah the old monogram well monogram Marvel whatever they were twenty years ago I built them before I still have a thing for the the Hendrick cars which this is not but that's okay hey it's all right I like I like Texas Terry Labonte back in the day he doesn't drive anymore and that's fine I haven't watched it in twenty years either. <laughs> this, though, based on the engineering that I see that's in full-size cars and I see in the kits, I know I definitely have another one of these coming. I have the Napa car coming, and that will be great fun because I know somebody who delivers auto parts, and well, that works for me, okay? The engineering of these kits, though, is so far beyond whatever anybody, AMT, Monogram, whomever, has done before that it isn't even funny. It's just, wow. So, you know, if you're in doubt, oh no, it's some crappy little model. No, it's not a crappy little model. This thing is really, this thing's engineered. You better follow the instructions in the order because if something's not fitting right from what I can see, you've done it wrong. I would gladly recommend this kit to any, to anybody. Simple as that simple as that it is beautiful again not gonna take it not gonna open the box because you've seen it all before if there's if there's plenty and if you haven't if you haven't been looking on youtube long enough let's put it that way i've seen it all before i couldn't do as comprehensive a review on it as say lucas he can because luca is much more into nascar than i am still it's very, very impressive. Another thing that was ordered months ago and finally got here is a Revell 132nd scale easy kit of a Liebherr A900C Matronic. Now, I guess I didn't pay attention to when I read the uh, the auction on eBay, but I got it for steel of deal pricing. I know there's other pieces of 132nd scale heavy machinery in the series, and I may have to, I'm much more inclined to get in them now. As it says it is, it snapped together, yeah, I'll probably glue it. Again, it says no gluing required, no painting required. And I guess I didn't notice that. And no decaling required either because this is the, well, the main, this is the main part of the machine, as you can see. Uh, it's already been painted, it's already been detailed. That's a black wash down there, guys. That's very cool. And it's even got, all the company markings, I'm guessing it's Tampa printed on. And that's cool. I mean, they're definitely looking good. Oh, there's a gray stripe underneath that. Anyway, very cool. I'm going to look forward to putting this together. Uh, matching colors, if necessary, won't be that hard because, well, there's nothing going to be custom mixed here, unlike on their Star Wars kits. And well, I match that easy enough. <laughs> Uh, there's two aircraft kits that cut, that came in. You can say, well, yeah, but you don't do... This is called the Can-Am Garage. Yeah, but the Can-Am Garage are never defined it as simply cars. I, over the years, I have built, well, Star Wars, Star Trek, which you've never seen me show on the show, on, on here. But there's also, you know, it's aircraft are what I've started building as a kid. Uh, something really a little different is a, we're not really getting that today, are we? 
Here's an Airfix, Airfix 179 second scale, English Electric Lightning F6. Yeah, that's no P38, is it? Nor is it a F22. That's the English Electric Lightning. Two jet engines stacked, well, over and under. <laughs> Lots of power. It was very much a, it was more of a jet age Spitfire because it had incredible acceleration. It was, and, uh, Unfortunately, like the Spitfire, not a lot of range, thus the overwing tanks, which which helped. Unfortunately, unlike the Spitfire, this thing can, and that the bulge down here would be more fuel again. Unlike the Spitfire, though, this which had machine guns, this thing, this should in theory have cannon. It has, as you can see on the aircraft banking away, two missiles. That's it. But virtually everything in the aircraft would have been British design. I mean. The missiles were fire streaks or red top missiles, both British design. As far as I know, the avionics were all British. The engines were British. The aircraft was British. It was one of the last, last great gasps of British aircraft manufacturing, at least when it comes to combat aircraft. Nowadays, it's all, well, we decided we we're going to do this. We decided, you know, this consortium is going to do this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, also, the other aircraft that came in at this time is a 172nd scale Saab JS-39 Gripen. Uh, if you're following what's going on with the Royal Canadian Air Force for the last too much time, we, we're still flying CF-18s, or more appropriately as we call them, CF-188s, which were, and they're A models, which means they date from oh, the late 70s, early 80s, we're still flying them. We've been teased with replacements of F-35s, and in the meantime, we still had to go out and buy some second-hand F-18s from the Royal Australian Air Force. Another viable option, but not necessarily favored by the Canadian government, or, well, I don't even know if that's the right way to put it, is the, is the Yonder Sab Viggen. So, mine will be finished as what? A Canadian aircraft could look like and I have decals left that will be left over from another project another aircraft project yeah yeah I yeah, know I'm going to the airplanes hey it is what it is it'll happen you may not see it you may just see the finished aircraft or you may see something you know akin to having our little banshee sitting here like this yeah I know it's a tail setter somebody forgot to add weight in his haste to close up the fuselage anyway my little my little banshee is a wonderful little kit. Anyway, okay, so as I said, we'll get decals from another, another uh, aircraft kit, which the brown is needed for. Yeah, go figure on that one. Anyway, this one, I've got to figure out how I can show this to you without showing it to you because it's just absolutely massive. Hold on as we try moving the camera, guys. Sorry about this. It gets a little herky-jerky, but... That box is just too big to put on my workspace, even if there's nothing else on it. This was something that my friend Chris Martin found and acquired for me, and it's just a steel deal pricing on it. I couldn't say no. I thought it would, in fact, be an older German-style, German fire department-style tanker. This, in fact, is very modern. This is a big eight-man cab. Uh, the cabinet doors can be positioned up or down. Well, actually, they're positionable, let's put it that way, which is very, very cool. The equipment inside is, well, at best, half to three quarters. It's not you know, not like you can take out the fire extinguisher and have it be a real fire extinguisher or the generator or anything like that. Hey, given what it is and how much plastic there is in that box, I'm not complaining. What I thought I was getting, as I said, would be an, would be an early 80s Mercedes, tanker two man two three man cab at most with a water monitor on the roof and no that's not that this is this and this is just wow okay that's it for this video stay tuned till the next time around guys when we'll have well we'll show you show you a bit more about the banshee and the uh the uh <clears throat> we won't talk about that until we get to it just give me a moment See you in the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching.